If I ask you, what is 1 minus 1? What will you say? Of course, you will say the answer is 0, won't you? But when you say 0, what do you mean? Do you mean that there is nothing left? That is what conventional thinking tells us. If you were to explain to a 5-year-old kid why 1 minus 1 is 0, you will probably use an example such as if someone gives you one cookie and then takes it back from you, how many cookies would you have left? And the child would say, no cookie. And then you will say, therefore, 1 minus 1 is 0. Let us zoom closer on this problem. All matter, including cookies, are made up of particles. Each of these particles has mass, and there are a finite number of them that make up every object, and hence, objects have finite masses, which are equal to the sum of the masses of the particles that make them up. Cookies leave particles behind each time they are moved. So when you put one cookie on a surface, you cannot pick up the same number of particles that made up the cookie at the time of deposit. Some will be left on that surface, which have a mass as well. But wait, who cares about such small things? You still have your cookie back, don't you? This directly claims that you have left nothing behind. Under necessary conditions, let's place this nothing under a microscope. Aha! There are numerous organisms dining on the nothing you left them, just like you dined on your cookie. From your perspective, you left nothing behind, that is, zero. But from the perspective of the microbes, you have left over a million particles for them to enjoy. Two different results from the same operation, 1 minus 1. So what really is 1 minus 1? I think the bigger question is, does zero really exist? Let us look at this numerically. Let's say we have a very sensitive balance that measures the mass of that cookie to be 3.0004341069595 kilograms. According to you, this number is the same as 3.0000 kilograms. I mean, what is 0 0.0004 kilograms? You can surely let that one slide, can't you? But a mouse will say, wait a minute, I will have that 0 0.0004 kilograms. That can be a mouthful for me. So this number for a mouse is 3.0004 kilogram. The mouse throws away the 0 0.0003 kilograms because it is from that point that it starts being insignificant to it. A beetle says, hey guys, wait up, I will take that. So this number is 3.000043 kilograms for the beetle, and 3.0004341 for paramecium, and this for bacteria, and this for viruses. But is that where it ends? Of course not. We can go on forever. Each and every one of these organisms have a different sense of nothing. So when we, Homo sapiens, say we have reached nothing, have we? Really? This is intrinsic to numbers themselves. Every number can be written with an infinite number of decimal places. So between 1 and 2, for example, there are an infinite number of numbers, so it is impossible to count from 1 to 2. So how is it that we have 2? This question has baffled great minds for thousands of years, but I now have the answer. And that answer is perspective. As we have seen earlier, depending on the scale, every organism has a different sense of 3 beyond which it is no longer free. So, to solve this problem, the gap between any two numbers has to be quantized. 
let me substantiate this. For any given scale, there is a given number of decimal places within which things make sense. From our previous example, it is four decimal places for humans, five for rats, and so on. So, numbers can only come in chunks of the associated number of decimal places. When this is full, that is when we have a different number. For example, 3.999. The addition of anything to that produces 4.00 or something like that. From 2 to 3, you can quantize, for example, to two decimal places as follows. In this case, you get rid of the problem of having to add numbers after the last 9, which will go on forever. Everything that is quantifiable in the universe has a given set of decimal places within which it is defined, and there are no exceptions to this. This directly tells us that the zero you talk about can only exist in that defined situation, but absolute zero cannot exist. As we have seen that we can always add a number after the last number of that considered set of numbers. So, how can we define zero? Zero is anything or number with respect to a given situation that is too small to be considered anything. Absolute zero is an abstract concept and does not exist in reality. For our previous example, According to humans, 3 minus 3 is equal to 3.0004 minus 3.00. And this gives us 0 plus 0 0.0004. 0.0004 is a 0 for this operation. And this 0 on the right is the absolute 0, which represents nothing. Note that. There can be infinitely many zeros for this operation. It just depends on the situation. So we can write 0 equal to the magnitude of 0 plus epsilon, epsilon being the realistic 0. This approach solves all the indeterminates in math. Let's look at a demonstration. Before we continue, please don't forget to click on that subscribe and like button to support this channel. Those clicks really count. Did you know that multiplication is repeated addition? For example, 2 times 3 means add 2 3 times. That is, 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is equal to 6. This is the same as 3 times 2, which means add 3 2 times, which is 3 plus 3, which is equal to 6. That is why we say, Multiplication is commutative. Now, what is 0 times 2? It means at 0 2 times, which is equal to 0. This is the same as 2 times 0, which is equal to 0. 3 times 0 is equal to 0 plus 0 plus 0, which is equal to 0. 4 times 0 means at 0 4 times and still gives 0. We continue like that right up to n to have this, n being a whole number. This means that you should always have zero as long as n is a number, no matter how large it is. When n is too large, we can call that infinity. So what now is infinity times zero? Aha, uh -huh. now your math teacher will tell you that this is undefined because it can take any value. Does that mean the multiplication technique above is wrong? I will say no, because the multiplication works very well for our everyday operations. The problem should be this 0 times infinity. Let us go into the cookie factory. Each cookie weighs 2.000 grams. Because the scale is only sensitive enough to read 4 decimal places, all the cookies will have a mass slightly less than or greater than that, such as 2.0001 grams. So, the zero of this situation is 0 0.0001 gram. So in this case, n times zero 
is equal to n times 0 0.0001. If the factory produces 20,000 cookies, then we will have an extra mass of 20,000 times 0 0.0001, which is equal to 2 grams. So, if the same scale used in the factory is used to weigh these 20,000 cookies, it will rate a mass of 20,000 and 2 cookies. And the manager starts worrying about where the extra 2 cookies weight is coming from because the math doesn't add up. We have not reached infinity yet, but we already have a problem. Or does this mean 20,000 is an infinity of this situation? That is a discussion for another video. So, your teacher was right to tell you that 0 times infinity can take many values, but he wasn't right to say that it is undefined. We could have solved this problem using the formula 0 equals to the magnitude of 0 plus epsilon, such that n times 0 is equal to n times the magnitude of 0 plus n times epsilon, and this equals n times epsilon. Since by the definition of absolute zero, n times absolute zero is zero. Therefore, m times zero is equal to m times epsilon. So, as long as n is different from m, then m times zero is always different from n times zero. So, zero is not an absorbing factor as you were taught. This is the first video of this series that aims to clarify the problems arising from zeros and infinities, and to solve all the associated paradoxes, such as the infinite hotel paradox, Archeo and the tortoise, and so on. Visit the playlist titled Zero and Infinity by clicking on my channel profile below. Don't forget to subscribe so that you get informed each time there is an update. If zero times infinity is undefined, and n times infinity is infinity, we are still going to have a problem. We can write n as n plus 0. So, n times infinity is equal to n plus 0 all times infinity, which is equal to n times infinity plus 0 times infinity. And this will give us infinity plus undefined. So, what is infinity plus undefined? Is it undefined or infinity? Or both? 0 times infinity has to be 0 for this equation to make sense, which will also bring its own problems as we have seen already, or n is not equal to n plus 0. So you see, there is a fundamental problem with math, which is the idea of numbers. Math was invented to describe nature and was invented by observing nature. So, if it is limited, then our understanding of nature will also be limited. Nature does not allow us to have absolute zero for any situation. That means we can never measure anything with 100% accuracy. And since numbers are what we use to quantify these things, then numbers also can never be absolute. There must always be that uncertainty term, no matter how small. So every number n should be written as n equal to the magnitude of n plus epsilon. So n minus n is therefore equal to the magnitude of n plus epsilon 1 minus the magnitude of n plus epsilon 2, which is equal to the magnitude of n minus the magnitude of n plus epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2. This is equal to the magnitude of 0 plus epsilon 3, where epsilon 3 is equal to epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2. This is 0 according to how we defined 0 before. So indeed, n minus n is 0, but not in an absolute sense. The inherent uncertainty in any measurement in the universe is what is described by the Heisenberg uncertainty principle in physics. To fix the problem of n times infinity above, we need to know what 0 times infinity is, and to know that, we have to redefine infinity. 
let's leave those for subsequent videos. Stay tuned, stay connected by clicking that subscribe button. Hope I see you next time.